we're talking about the Zurb stack. Uh, so what is the Zurb stack? The Zurb stack is a uh, build template, build system uh, that not only includes foundation, but it includes a lot of other really cool dependencies that will help you code faster, build faster, um, be more efficient, and then also lighten your project um, when you're ready for production. So it's built on Node. Node um, actually runs uh, some of the biggest companies in the world. Uh, so Samsung, Coca-Cola, like uh, uh, eBay, they all use Node um, to build either server-side JavaScript or client-side JavaScript. And that's the beauty of it. It could do both. So we're using it here on the client side. And then uh, Gulp is a task manager that will run a lot of automated tasks for you. I'm just going to go through some of those so you can see uh, what it is actually doing for you and how maybe you might be able to extend upon that. So why do we have the Zurb template? Um, the reason was is we were delivering client projects um, to clients. And, and typically at Zurb, when we deliver a client project, it's uh, five coded pages or so uh, that are like templates that the client can go and use and, and build out the rest of their site. And when we were delivering those, we found that uh, there was a lot of places where we were repeating code, um, like headers, footers, navigation, things like that. We needed a better system for that. Um, on top of that, uh, organization is really important um, when you're handing a project off to, let's say you're a designer, you're handing a project off to the developer. The organization of your CSS is really important, your, your JavaScript. So uh, this template actually helps you do that and we'll show you how that does. So just a quick overview of what's in the Zurb stack. Um, it's using uh, Node to run everything. So the nice thing is about um, if you came from Foundation 5 and the SAS version, there was a lot of dependencies. In Foundation 6, the dependencies to run this stack is uh, very few. Uh, you really just need to download Node, um, which is a download from a website. And you, uh, you, you should have um, Git installed as well. And with those two combinations, everything else uh, gets installed automatically. So runs on Node. We use Gulp as the task runner. And uh, Gulp is really nice because it's written in like a JavaScript type of format. So if you're familiar with that, it's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, NPM is the Node package manager that um, grabs dependencies and installs them for you, keeps them updated. Um, Bower is the same thing, but for more front end type dependencies like foundation itself, jQuery, Motion UI, things like that. And then uh, Panini is a handlebars templating uh, engine that we have installed here as well. And I'll show you all the cool things you can do with that. So when we create a project, uh, there's a typical folder structure that the project comes with. So you have your source folder and the source, sorry, very sensitive uh, track that here. So the source folder is actually what contains the working files that you will be using. So you'll get some other folders, which I'll show you here in a moment. You don't want to mess with those. You want to stay in the source folder. Uh, so that way you can get the most use out of, uh, you, you want to you wanna be able to change your uh, settings. You want to um, create new pages in the source folder. You don't want to do it elsewhere. And I'll show you why. So you get your assets. Uh, your asset folder includes images, JavaScript, SCSS. Now, if I had uh, fonts that I was installing, I would actually install those in that same folder as well. Data is something that we'll cover in a little bit, but that's part of the Panini templating language. You can actually store uh, data that you can reuse. Uh, layouts is where you would actually keep your main layouts, and I'll show you what that means. Those are, that's the head and the, and the closing body tag of your page that gets added to every page. So that's another uh, Panini component. Your pages are obviously your website pages. Partials are HTML partials that we would use uh, to inject small pieces of HTML onto the page using Panini. And of course, there's also a style guide. Uh, which is really amazing. 
And that's something that, um, you know, once you complete your project, it's really awesome to have a code style guide. So that way you can keep things um, organized, hand it off to other team members, and they know how to implement new pages or components. So as far as the folder structure, I'm going to show you, um, you know, a full-fledged project here as an example. Um, but the source folder is what contains all your core files. You don't want to modify outside of that. You want to use the source folder as where you're adding pages and modifying things. Uh, you also get a dist folder, which is a distribution folder. And basically, that is your um, compiled assets, your, your uh, flattened pages, that's your CSS and your JavaScript that you'll actually upload to your server to, you know, um, to actually deploy your site. So it's like a mini static site, basically. Let's jump into some code and just take a look at that. So I have a brand new uh, project that I just created here. And this is what the folder structure looks like. So, oops. Yep, we want to get rid of that. All right, so we have Bower components. Uh, now this is the folder that um, the Bower install creates, and this is your uh, foundation jQuery motion UI and what input. So usually don't need to mess with those. That's just for reference there. Uh, node modules this is all the um, node dependencies that get installed, or uh, npm inst uh, dependencies that get installed. And again, you don't mess with those but you do have your source folder right here, okay? So your source folder contains uh, assets. It already has folders for images, uh, JavaScript, and SCSS. Now you'll notice that there's this folder here. Uh, you can get, sorry, these files, these git keep files, you can get rid of those. They're just there so GitHub doesn't freak out if you um, commit an empty folder. So that's, where you would put your images, uh, JavaScript. This is where you'd put any of your custom JavaScript in app.js. Uh, the reason this works is because it's actually imported into the layout. Uh, again, we, we wanna keep everything organized. So in the SCSS folder, we have a components folder already created for you. So if I was gonna create some custom components here, um, which I'll show you a full-fledged project here in just a moment, uh, then you would put all your components into this folder. And then when you do that, you would actually import them into the app.scss folder. So if you open this folder from default, uh, you can see that there's already a ton of includes in here. These are the individual components of foundation. And let's say, you know, at the end of your project, you decide you didn't use button group, you didn't use uh, call out, you didn't use close button, you didn't use the menu. Um, so you can just comment those out. When you compile now, it will ignore these files and not compile them. So that way your output CSS file is much smaller. So I created a project here uh, just a little moment ago and it's called Good Times. So let's actually work with that one. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, I have to type these things correctly. So now we're seeding into good time. So CD has changed directory. And we're going to start that. So you can start the project with npm start. Uh, there's also a uh, foundation start. Um, the reason that there's two is we just created an alias um, in case one is easier than the other. Uh, npm start is very universal, so I would just use that. Uh, so what I mean by universal is it works um, no matter how you created the project. So once I run npm start, it's going to actually go through all the uh, components in the gulp file and actually start to compile them. Uh, into the disk folder. Now you notice that there's no disk folder here until we run this. So this process, like starting the project for the first time, will create your disk folder, uh, which we're going to look at here in just a moment. So you notice that 
when it's done running, it actually opens up a web page, and I'll explain what that is, but this is your index page. So now we have, oh, this is the wrong project. So let's hop over to good times. So now we have a disk folder. So if we open the disk folder, you can see this is your um, your distribution uh, folder where you're going to actually upload this to your uh, website. You see that everything, all the CSS, even your the default CSS from Foundation, even your custom CSS gets compiled into this one file. And the nice thing about that is if you look at the layouts here, there's only one call to the server. So... Here's where we're linking that, um, and I'll explain what these helpers here are in, in a little bit. Uh, but basically, this is pointing to that uh, disk folder there, and this is your compiled CSS, one call to the server, so it's a little bit faster. All right, so 